So the first thing we're going to do here is um, I have this stock uh, that we're going to use to make the knife out of today, um, or rather this week. <laughs> and it's two inches wide, um, a little over three millimeters thick. I think that's I think it's a quarter of an inch thick. Um, and it's 440 stainless steel, which is a stainless steel uh, alloy that has a fairly high carbon content, so it's suitable for hardening, suitable for making blades out of one of the better um, stainless steel varieties out there. So um, stainless steel is also very nice for kitchen knives because then you don't have to, you know, it's not so sensitive like I explained earlier in one of my other videos. Got my little exacto knife, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a template of what I want the knife to look like. Just here I have some cardboard from like a cereal box. It's really nice because it's not corrugated so you can cut it pretty thin and trace on it later on. This is a little template I've made for handles. Um, we won't be following it exactly, but it's a good thing. It's a good uh, little starting point. Um, so yeah, gonna figure out what I'm gonna make for this knife out of, or make this knife look like. So here's the template that I just made. Um, it's out of cardboard. Uh, so basically, I used the, this template for of the for the handle, but then I made this little rounder because I don't really want that on my knife. A um, couple notes is that both the top, both the spine and the edge will taper to a point. Um, this part is not quite vertical um, on a chef knife. It makes it, in my opinion, it's a little bit nicer and safer if it's out at a slight angle. Um, I was just checking the how it would chop, how it kind of rolls over that edge over there. Feels pretty good. Um, you can also kind of check the grip a little bit at this point, but since it's really thin, it'll feel weird even if it's kind of a right fit. But you can kind of pretend you're holding a round thing, and you'll be able to feel a little bit better. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with this with this template so far. Uh, although this doesn't necessarily is not exactly how the knife might turn out. For comparison, let me show you what we did here. So this is the template um, that I originally made for the knife that I uh, that I previously showed you. Um, then when I made the cardboard template, I realized that the grip was all messed up. 
So I left that part in, and that part in. What, the rule of thumb is that when you're making your templates, err on the side of having too much material there, because you can always re remove it later. It's really hard, though, to add steel back where you took it off. However, and then even going from the template to the, um, going from the template to the actual knife, though, you know, I ended up making the, the sub hilt not quite so deep. This part at this angle I made a lot shallower, and it just felt better that way. So we ended up with this kind of knife here, okay, compared to template, <laughs> original template. Um, I also brought the tip back up a little bit because it worked better that way. So yeah, this is just a guide. It's not really exactly how the knife's going to turn out. Um, they're more sort of guidelines rather than an actual plan. Okay, that out of the way. Next thing we have to do is transfer this template onto our steel stock. It should only take a moment. Um, I'm actually using the naturally, the already milled surfaces of the steel as much as I can. So, um, this I'll mark with this little blue guy. Okay, so now we've just, um, I just went and transferred the pattern onto here. Now, since the mold is on the inside of this wide purple, you know, bluish line, I'm going to try and cut to the outside of the line, and that way, that'll give me, you know, a, a, about a quarter of a, a little less than a quarter of an inch of a margin of error, um, in case I screw up somewhere. So, that's just for, uh, keep me safe and in the clear. A um, couple things we'll have to do when we're grinding this knife, though, is uh, I'll have to worry about this little turn here, which kind of gives me trouble. Um, and we'll also have to make this more distally tapered, and then we'll have to taper it from the top to bottom, obviously. So yeah, next we're going to move on to the actual cutting phase over there with the vise and um, several of my power tools. I'll see you over there.